Well, good afternoon. Dwayne, can you hear me in the green room, my friend? Great. Uh, so uh, now that the technology is working as it should, uh, welcome, welcome. Yeah, uh, welcome, uh, friends, to another uh, episode of um, Conversations with Dune and Friends. Uh, today we have a fantastic friend joining us, uh, Mr. Dwayne Peace uh, from uh, Calgary. And uh, so we're kind of talking across uh, three hours uh, of uh, Alberta landscape here today. And again, my name is Dune Nguyen, and uh, our guest today uh, is... Um, Again, Dwayne Peace, and we're going to be talking about uh, youth and, and their health and their safety and and their well-being. And so, if you're a parent or or, or uh, if you are a youth or or if you are people who are are in care of youth in our society, uh, please uh, feel free to uh, uh, watch and comment and uh, uh, get involved in this uh, wonderful conversation here about uh, again keeping our youth. Um, safe and, and uh, healthy and uh, uh, so uh, with uh, with that brief uh, kind of mention there I, I do want to run through maybe just a quick uh, uh, intro of Dwayne so that you uh, know who it is that uh, you'll be hearing uh, from for the next hour and a bit here so Dwayne specializes in uh, empowering youth to be their best uh, at, both at home and school uh, with Parents, uh, he, he specializes in exposing youth issues to parents, uh, creating a, a, an environment for change. Since his retirement in, in 2003 from the Calgary Police uh, Service, Dwayne Peace has uh, spoken to over 500,000 students and, and had been motivating audiences across Canada, uh, per, Bermuda, and the US, including uh, Penn State University. His engaging and, and dynamic uh, dissection of the real life issues uh, that we all have or face in schools as students, uh, at home as parents, uh, and in the workplace as employees uh, causes audiences to, to, to think at a deep level. Uh, and his passionate, no nonsense approach with his humor is also heartfelt, uh, real, and motivating. This moves individuals to a direction of creating life with less pressures and more freedom. An in-demand uh, uh, speaker and author, uh, parenting with eyes wide open and consultant, he believes that uh, our attitude determines our successes and failures. By changing our attitude and focus, we have the ability to create an environment of freedom uh, that is beneficial to everyone. Through uh, interactive exercises and his workshop uh, shows that uh, you know change, although weird and awkward um, and uncomfortable, is not wrong. It, it's just different, and change can be good. Uh, Dwayne is happily married to the father of five and and uh, grandfather of seven, and uh, his passion for making a difference in people's lives uh, extend well past the the stage. Uh, his hobbies include weightlifting, golfing, basketball, extreme hiking, and, and water sports. He, he definitely walks the talk. So friends, help me in uh, extending a warm welcome to our guest today, Mr. Dwayne Peace. How are you doing today, my friend? I am doing very well, and it's good to be with you again. Wonderful. Thanks for having me. Yeah, wonderful. I really enjoy my time uh, visiting Calgary a few times there where, where you were serving the uh, our association, CAPS, the, the Canadian Association of Professional Speakers, uh, with your talents there, with uh, whether it's sound or staging or whatever have you. Uh, so thank you for being a member of CAPS and also being a, a, a service to our, our fellow members, my friend. A lot of great people. It's, it's really hard to show up with that many great people. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, hopefully our viewers can hear us uh, uh, nice and loud. I I'm looking at the monitor uh, lights here and it looks like we're all good, my friend. So, so uh, uh, tell us a bit more about uh, what got you here. I, I know I went through a little bit of a bio there, yeah. but, but tell us about your journey and um, yeah, fill, sure. fill us in a bit. Uh, well, I joined the Calgary Police Service back in 78 and in 1997, after the World Police Fire Games, I got posted in the schools as a school resource officer. And while I was there, uh, I, the worst days that I had in the schools is when as a policeman, I would charge students and they would look at me and go, Constable Peace, I didn't know that. If I'd known that, I wouldn't have done it. 
So I developed sessions to educate them. So at least they could not say they did not know. It's like, nope, you did know. You just chose not to listen. Here's your court date. Here's your fingerprint date. Or here's your ticket. And so after I retired in 2003, I took the sessions that I had developed and started uh, doing them outside of Calgary. And uh, to date, I've been from Vancouver to Montreal. I've been up in Whitehorse, Toledo, Northwest Territories, uh, Bermuda 13 times working in schools in Bermuda, as well as uh, down in the U.S., uh, a private all-girls school in Princeton, New Jersey, and uh, at Penn State University at three different campuses in Penn State in Pittsburgh area. Wonderful. Uh, thank you for sharing that. So uh, how long, uh, if I did the uh, counting briefly, you, you were in the uh, police service for, for a few decades, right? 25 years and nine days. Not uh, <laughs> Nine days. <laughs> well, that's, that's very awesome. So uh, again, uh, my respect to uh, the you. men and women who uh, serve yeah. us uh, and, and do the difficult job that is, uh, frankly, I, I wouldn't want to do. Frankly, I would, wouldn't be able to do. And uh, so, uh, you know, as, as much as um, there are always challenges in society, uh, I have always had a, a deep respect for, for those who service us in, in that way, who serve us in that way, my yeah. friend. So thank and you. It's changed so much over the years. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm going to start way back, way back then, way back then. What, before you got into police service, what got you interested in police service? Uh, well, I grew up in Dawson Creek, BC, so 13,500 people, small city. And um, the kids that I went to high school with were uh, commenting on uh, all cops are jerks. And they wouldn't use the word jerks. They'd use a swear word. And that kind of hurt my feelings because I had two uncles that were policemen, one in Calgary and one in Edmonton. So when I was 15, probably 15 and a half, I decided, you know what? I'm going to become a policeman so I can show people that not all cops are jerks. Mm. And uh, at that time, that's where it started. And I was lucky to get on when I was 19, uh, the same year I graduated high school and um, 25 years later retired. And then I've been doing this professionally for 17 years. Wow. Wow. So so you had a mission early on in life to yeah. uh, contribute to the positivity of, uh, <laughs> of the world, right? Absolutely. And, you know, out of all the years I did in the policing, which included um, getting paid to ride the Harley Davidsons for five years, which is pretty awesome, <laughs> uh, working in traffic and uh, walking the beat downtown during the 1988 Winter Olympics. Uh, the highlight of my career would be the six and a half years I spent in the schools as a school resource officer. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So, so, so tell us a little bit more. Um, I, I'm just going to ask random questions. And yeah. the first question that, that comes to mind is, uh, as you work with school, what is the one insight that, that you've gained from that that uh, you know our viewers might be interested in hearing about? And maybe a, a story or an insight. So, so you're working in schools um, and, and you know you meet all these people and uh, all the youth and, and students and whatnot. Is there one story that's top of mind that you can share right off the bat here, my friend? I have lots of them, obviously, because yep. of the years, but I think it's not so much the stories at the time. Mm -hmm. It may be like 10 years later when you get a letter mm -hmm. from somebody that says, you were, you spoke to me, I heard you 10 years ago, and this is how. So to give you an example, I had a lady contact me. She was going to university at UBC mm -hmm. and she contacted me and she said, I had two cornerstones stones in my life. One, when I was in grade eight, I heard your message for the first time. And at that time, my parents are going through a divorce and you really caused me to think and uh, changed your life that way. And then she heard me again in grade 11 when she was involved in self-harm, suicide, uh, eating disorder. There was a whole lot of stuff going on in her life. And she heard me again. <clears throat> and so anyway, she contacted me 10 years later to say that she's at UBC. Uh, she still thinks of me often. And if she's in a communications course and one of the deals they have to do in this course is to actually interview somebody who made a difference in their life. And she automatically thought of me and on her own dime, she flew from Vancouver to Calgary to come to my house to do an interview with me for her, uh, for her course and then flew back to Vancouver later that day. Um, so stories like that, where just out of the blue people contact you and say, this is where I was, this is where I am now. Thank you. That is uh, powerful and very heartwarming, and uh, it actually sends shivers to my uh, kind of. I just uh, 
you know, love hearing stories like that where, you know, people make in, an impact or, or a positive contribution to other people in, in ways that, that, that they don't really uh, imagine or, or in some cases um, can, can easily measure. Yeah. And, and this is like years after, decades after somebody right. who, you know, uh, that is a great story. Thank you for sharing that, uh, Dwayne. And, uh, and so, it doesn't just stop with students as well. I was uh, a couple of years ago, I was at a parent session and I had uh, 48 parents there, um, two and a half hour session, it's over, everybody leaves. One guy, I would say he's my age, maybe a little older, comes up to me and um, he's, uh, he's got tears in his eyes. And I said, you know, hey, it's, it's okay, it's okay. I'll stop packing up my equipment. And uh, he says, I want you to know, um, changing and saving lives, he pointed at my logo. And I mm -hmm. said, yeah, he said, you saved one tonight. He gave me a hug, cried on my shoulder, left. Yeah. Have no idea who he is. Yeah. So, you know, again, uh, uh, words do matter. And, and uh, being with people at the right time to be able to make that kind of impact is a privilege, isn't it? It is. It is. And it's something that cannot be taken lightly. Yeah. 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 What I like to do is show some of the photos and uh, by way of showing the photos, we're able to maybe get into some random stories of your journey. And Absolutely. then, uh, you know, based on that, I will uh, ask some more questions to kind of uh, uh, move it uh, beyond that. But the first photo that I'm going to bring up here, uh, it's going to be, again, like I said, random order. So so here okay. it is. And uh, let me just uh, bring it in so we can uh, see it. Um, this photo is of a check. Tell us about this check that I'm about to bring in here. <laughs> and okay. uh, um, well, a number, of, a number of years ago, I kept coming across students that were dealt a very uh, crappy hand in life. Mm -hmm. uh, there was not a, like maybe they were uh, foster care, uh, possibly mom and dad involved in drugs and alcohol, um, self-harm, suicide, eating disorders, like just everything going on in their life. And they turn out to be this resilient teenager with this amazing energy, positive outlook. Well, it uh, looks like um, you have um, somehow uh, got disconnected, Dwayne. So hopefully you'll come right back. And uh, uh, while you are coming back or, or making your way through the internet land here, I just wanna share a, a few more photos and uh, a bit of a preview, I guess. Um, uh, there you are coming back. That's that's great. I see you. So uh, uh, so yeah, um, you're back from the internet land there. So so what happened is my years of working with students, I've always come across students that have had uh, just unbelievable upbringings, stuff that we would uh, probably as adults not be able to survive or mm -hmm. comprehend. And they turn out to be these amazing individuals with positive energy. They have a focus in where they're going in their life. And uh, so I, for a number of years, have wanted to start up a, a charity or make enough money where I could give money to students for scholarships that are gonna uh, go off. They don't have the greatest grades as far as they're not gonna qualify for scholarships uh, from other areas, uh, but they are an uh, unbelievable success story. And so I want to celebrate what they've been able to do in their lives. And so in this case here, our uh, winner for, uh, for $2,165 was uh, Savannah. So my wife and I set up a charity called Thumb Switch for Life. Um, all the money that we uh, receive goes to the schools. So a certain percentage goes to the check. A large percentage goes to the schools to offset the cost for schools because school budgets are always, uh, seems to be getting cut and uh, they're relying more on parent councils than that. And uh, then a small portion goes to the website, bookkeeping, all of that, but nobody gets paid. It's all run by volunteers. So there's no money being used somewhere else. And unfortunately, you know, we see year after year in the news, some charities misusing uh, funds and that's not the case here. So, and that's my wife who is also a teacher, Savannah, just an amazing lady who is now in Regina going to university and myself. Right. Yeah. That's wonderful. So um, let me uh, just get to the next photo here. Ah, look at that. <laughs> we can all just, just take yeah. that and just breathe in that air. <laughs> Absolutely. This is uh, in Bermuda. Um, I've been, like I said, I've been to Bermuda 13 times working in schools. And that is, I think it's called Horseshoe Bay in Bermuda, mm -hmm. looking over top. 
And the thing is, is that when I was there, um, the first time I went there was the end of August, 1st of September. And uh, the temperature on the TV was 30 degrees Celsius and the water temperature was 29.5 degrees Celsius. So you can't even go to the water to cool off. And it's stu super sticky because of the humidity. But just like, I mean, those colors, those are like, you know, we love to watch movies that have those colors. Yeah. Uh, so you didn't go anywhere near the triangle, I hope. <laughs> well, there's, that's the tip of the triangle. So, yeah. Oh, really? Wow. Wow. So, so you mentioned earlier, you've been to Bermuda a number of times, right? Yes. Yeah. So Working in private schools. I have not been into the government schools there as mm. uh, funding and budgets, uh, but I've uh, worked in uh, probably about six or seven of the private schools there. Kids are absolutely amazing. And the staff is out of this world. Nice. Nice. So, um, well, thank you for sharing that. So, so you've been around, uh, I'm just curious, uh, uh, is it only North America do you have uh, done this with or, or have you gone beyond North America at some point? I, I actually go wherever I'm asked to go. Um, mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter um, if I got a request to go to Australia, New Zealand, I would be there. If I got a request to go to Europe, I would be there. Uh, wherever we can go to change and save lives of youth and uh, to cause people to think, including parents, I will go to. So I have not said no to any place. Uh, that has requested. I've even driven, uh, I think it was, I drove 11 hours to speak to nine students. Uh -huh. And uh, that was one of the few presentations where I think I had 18 parents show up. And that's the first time I've ever had the parents outnumber the students. Oh, wow. But yeah, I, I go wherever because who am I to say no? That could be a community needs uh, needs the work that I do. And if a child dies of suicide, maybe if I'd gone, that child would still be with us. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, if you touch one life, that is worth it, right? Absolutely. Uh, this is a school in uh, Bonneville, Catholic school. Absolutely amazing. Vince, the principal, is absolutely amazing. The students were amazing off the charts. And so, what I do is I do an assembly like this for three hours, and administrators are going three hours, like you know. And I say, look, I can hold them for. They can play video games for six hours without getting up. So if the information is real. Uh, and it's presented in a certain fashion, they can stay focused. And I've had principals say, you know, at the parent session, they say, when he told me it was going to be three hours, I was going, this is going to be a train wreck. But in the three hours he had the students, only five people got up to go to the bathroom and they raced back to their chairs to hear what he had to say. So yeah. that's kind of the response I get. You bet. You bet. So after the assembly, we then do multiple small group sessions of 20 to 25 students. Usually it's a homeroom teacher in their class. And that's for three hours as well. So I'll go into schools depending on the size. And sometimes I'll be there for four or five days to put as many students through that life changing experience as they refer to it as, as possible. Nice. Nice. So, um, you know, that picture there, it just brings so many emotions to me as I look at that, thinking of my own childhood, think of my, uh, my sons who are actually in university now, uh, both nice. of them. Of course, they're working remotely at it right now in the other rooms. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> With COVID. Yeah, so, so that's, that's great. This is uh, Bryce Canyon. So um, it's down in southern Utah. And if anybody has a chance to go, it is unbelievable what the, um, the environment has done to create this masterpiece. And wow. the nice thing is, is that you can go in and hike throughout it. It's not just something you can look at. You can go hiking throughout, and of course, I like hot weather, so it is, uh, you know, in the mid 30s while you're hiking through there. So you got to have lots of water with you, but absolutely gorgeous. And uh, it was actually shown to me when I was probably about 20 years of age by a mechanic of mine. He had it on his calendar, and he said, "You ever been there?" And I went, "No." He says, "You got to go there." And it took me a number of decades, but I did go, and I've been there, I think, two times now, and it's amazing, absolutely amazing. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. Ah, this the is logo. the, yeah, the logo. Let yeah. me uh, just pull it up so we can see the, the rest of the bottom there. Yep. Yes. So, so. Um, I had this logo developed um, and uh, changing and saving lives, life synergy for youth, obviously there. The leaves around the outside, the different colors uh, represent uh, different things. The pink at the top for bullying, the purple, two purple leaves on the bottom. Uh, for mental health and the blue and the green are uh, suicide colors, uh, national and international. The three inside, 
you'll notice that the two, the green and the purple, match the leaves that are on the outside, but the uh, powder blue does not. And that represents a lot of the kids that don't fit in and how we need to come together and accept them equally as we do everybody else. That's uh, fantastic. That's, uh, you know, um, youth, as they always say, as we always believe, it, it is really uh, that they are our future leaders. And in, in many ways, yeah. they already are leading yes. peers and others in, in various ways. Absolutely. Uh, it's, um, let me ask you this. Let me yes. ask you this. You, you spent a lot of time with youth, and uh, um, have you seen a trend or a sort of a, how, if you compare youth from, let's say, 30, 40 years ago, maybe when, when we were their age, um, what are a couple of um, kind of characteristics or, or trends or things you can comment on? Or have they always been the same as they've always been? Any comment from that from your, from your perspective? Well, technology has changed everything. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the the students, um, they can't hide anywhere. Mm. I mean, you know, when when I was growing up, I would get picked on in elementary school, middle school, and high school. Uh, but I knew when I made it inside my parents' house, I was safe. Uh, the youth of today do not have a safe place because mm. of, um, you know, texting, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, they don't have a safe place. They're coming to their house at all times, there's 24 seven, they can come into the house via that. And so part of my presentation is to um, create some uh, social awareness around what they're doing and that there actually is charges available that they could be laid, that could be charged against them uh, if they go down this road, because a lot of them, they think, well, this is a, well, we were just joking, or this is, this is a lark, like we didn't really mean anything by it. And so I show them the criminal code and I say, you do anything wrong, I can guarantee you I can find a charge in here that's applicable for you. Mm -hmm. um, you punch me, I'll charge you with assault. You spit in my face, I'll charge you with assault. And so a, a lot of them, they just think, well, it's a joke or it's a lark or whatever, and it's not. Mm -hmm. And so really cause them to be good citizens of the school and of their community. Yeah, yeah. Uh, awareness is the, the first step. And then... Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I also believe the awareness and consequences because they have to understand, like, I, that's why I don't like it when the kids say, well, I didn't know. If I'd known, I would have done that. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I want to educate them. To, so, so you can't say you didn't know. No, you did. You just chose not to listen. Mm -hmm. But you did know. And mm -hmm. for a staff and administration, what it does, it allows them to say, look, we had this guy in the school for this reason. And you went and did this. Mm -hmm. You leave me no choice but to do this. You cannot say you didn't know. So it, it empowers the staff and the the administrator administrators in the schools that I've been in as well. And what a lot of the teachers come back and say, hey, I just wanted to give some feedback after the assembly. I had my class in, talked to my class, and uh, what they said was, the choice is ours. Yeah. They, they get the message very clear as, look, I'm not here to tell you. I'm just going to give you information, and then you can decide what you want to do with it. Mm -hmm. But the choice is yours. Yeah. You make good choices, you have good consequences. You make bad choices, you have negative consequences, but the choice is yours. You get to decide. Absolutely. And this is the logo for uh, for Thumb Switch for our, our charity. Uh, the gray arrow going down, obviously, um, you know, you're, you're kind of blue and you're going down. And the, um, the purple mental health is on the way up. And I mean, we can have such a positive impact in people's lives simply by the words that we say we're very quick to rip on people and people have a comeback for that because it happens all the time but when somebody gives them a compliment a lot of times they don't know how to respond to it rather than just saying oh thank you uh, it's amazing how many friendships i've developed in the gym that i work at simply by giving a compliment to somebody mm -hmm. yeah we don't do it enough there you are in with your logo proudly to display yeah, there. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Love the colors. <laughs> Very uh, vibrant colors. That's what I wanted. Uh, is, uh, if you know me, I'm not a, uh, I mean, it's funny that I wear a black golf shirt as, <laughs> uh, as a uniform. Uh, but when I'm um, on my days off, whatever I love, I love, I have bright lime green shirts and um, I just love bright colors because it brightens up my day. Yeah. And so I don't wear it for other people. Um, I wear it for myself. And I tell the kids, I say, I think we should have bright shirt days in school. We have, you know, uh, paint shirt day for 
for uh, bullying and we have all these different, why not just have a bright shirt day? See who can pump up the volume the most with their shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. That would be cool. But but you know, I know that black really allows the logo to yeah. really just uh it's almost like a canvas for that uh, message that you have there, right? Yeah, it doesn't show the same on a white shirt, I can guarantee you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Tell us about this good looking bunch. Yeah, that's well, that gives you an idea of how tiny I am. And I'm like 5'10, 230. Oh, so okay. it gives you an idea of the size of my voice. So I, I did the police thing. I got married, divorced, and then remarried. A lot of policemen seem to do that. Mm -hmm. And so these uh, three boys are from my first marriage. Mm -hmm. And I play hockey with all three of them when they're able to mm -hmm. uh, every Saturday night. And my oldest daughter is to my, is to, if you're looking at the picture, to the left. And my youngest daughter, who just tur uh, is turning 19 uh, this year in October, is in the middle of, the, of course, my amazing, wonderful wife, who I could not do what I do if it was not for her. Wonderful. Remind her, uh, remind us what's her name again? It's Jacqueline. Jacqueline. And I have a lot of parents come up after the parent session. Please say thank you for your, to your wife for allowing you to be on the road to do this for our community. So, yeah. And, and in fact, not only is she very supportive, she's actually quite uh, involved as well. If I could uh, maybe share quickly here. Yeah. Uh, if you look at this, uh, tell us a bit about this. Well, it's a bookmark to advertise the charity. What we found is we weren't getting any donations to the charity because nobody knew about it. Mm. And so um, when I um, when I sell the book, I put two of those inside, one for them as a bookmark for the book, but also one for them to give to somebody that they think maybe their corporation, their business, or maybe they're philanthropic in nature, and this is something they'd want to support. Uh, the cool thing about the charity is, is that if they want to talk to the founders, they talk to us directly. They don't have to go through a food chain to get up to the top or we have to clear our schedule so we can talk to them. Um, you know, if, like if, for example, if we had a company in Toronto that decided we want to support this, uh, as long as it's not a lark, uh, I would on my own dime fly to Toronto to meet with them to explain what's going on, answer the questions, 100% transparent. I mean, my wife's a teacher. I was a policeman for 25 years. Integrity is high on our list of life. And so, um, if they had any questions or they wanted to be see where the flexibility is or what can we do to advertise and promote the fact, we have some that they don't want. They want their Mr. and Mrs. Anonymous. That's it. And uh, we respect that. Yeah. You mentioned the book. So yes. we're going to look at it again later on, but I'm just going to hold it up for yes. us. Uh, <laughs> there, my friend. Parody with eyes wide open. Uh, you know, that, that, that eye there, it, tell us what's inside the people there. It's an iceberg. And uh, the reason the iceberg is when I'm talking to the kids in the small group sessions, I refer to everybody as an iceberg. Um, with an iceberg, 10% of the iceberg you can see above the waterline and 90% is below the waterline. And it's kind of like us. We allow people to see our 10%. You know, hi, I'm a retired policeman or I'm a firefighter, I'm a teacher, I'm a farmer, whatever. We allow people to see our 10%. But what's really going on below the waterline, uh, we don't see. Uh, and so through the processes in the small group session, we lower that water level just to give a glimpse of what it is um, that people are dealing with in their lives. And what the kids come in and some are elevated in status and they think they're all that in a bag of chips and some are kind of wishing they were up a little higher on the totem pole. And when they leave, they're all equal. And um, I've had somebody say, you know, we talk about um, resiliency and we talk about empathy, but this exercise allows them to experience empathy. So when um, Palmo did the cover, I, I told him what I wanted. And he told me later, he said in his head, he's going, this is going to look so dumb. Uh, but when he put it together, he had to admit, he says, you converted me. It looks uh, it looks really good. And the picture on the back is me uh, on the coast of Bermuda. Uh, you know, some people want the office picture in that. And I'm just not an office kind of dude. So uh, <laughs> I picked something that had some color in it again. I want color, so pick something that has some color in it as well. So, fantastic! Thank and you. thank you so much for uh, uh, gifting me this book, my friend. And no uh, I will uh, keep these, uh, you know, the, the, the two bookmarker thing that we shared yeah. earlier as well, along with it. And uh, much appreciated. And uh, yeah, thank you. Not a problem. And the other thing that we did is we came up with a parent study guide. Oh, nice. Uh, we had a lot. It's a, in coil bound, so it's easy to fill out because we had a superintendent and some principals and parents contacting saying, do you have a study guide to go with this? Because a lot of people that are serious readers want a study guide to go with it.
Love it. And so my recommendation to people is buy two study guides, one for each spouse, mm -hmm. so that you can answer the questions honestly, and then you can compare the answers mm -hmm. rather than, you know, and that'll create some dialogue on where are they on the same page and where are there some changes that need to happen to benefit the relationship as well as benefit the, uh, the children in the family. Hey, Dwayne, could I get you to hold up that study guide again in sort of uh, okay. full so we can kind of see the full thing? Uh, maybe back it off a little bit then so we can see the whole thing. There you go. Fantastic. Um, coil, so you can just open it and leave it open nice and uh, absolutely so for that. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So so tell us, I'm going to bring in more photos here. I'm going okay. to go to the this next one. Tell us about this next one. Oh, so um, I've um, I've spoken at Rotary clubs and, and different organizations, and this was in Bermuda at the uh, I think it's called the Dinghy Club. Um, it's absolutely amazing to be able to talk to them. So I had I don't know about a half an hour uh, to talk to them in between uh, schools. Sometimes I speak at their uh, breakfasts before school starts. At this one here, I think I had the day off. Uh, mm -hmm. This might have been when I was there. Um, I had a uh, grad class in Bermuda raise enough money to fly me out to be the guest speaker for their grad ceremonies. And so uh, uh, this might have been at that time where I had the morning off and I could come and talk to them. Nice. Oh, this, <laughs> mm -hmm. this is a school in Wainwright. And these three ladies went through the assembly and the small group sessions when they were in, I believe it was junior high school. Mm. And all three of them are teachers at the same school. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, it was very cool to see the three of them. So I had to get a picture because you know you're getting old when the students that you worked with are now teachers and teaching kids. Yeah. So, yep. It just turned out that they're all kind of, I think they all sent the same email knowing what to wear, color combinations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. I didn't get that email. That's a great story. And, um, that's my wife and I in Calgary at, at Garth Brooks concert. Wow. Um, just an amazing entertainer. And he had, was uh, at the Saddle Dome and looked at the, uh, the top ring. Not a lot of rows, but a top ring. And he says, why are these seats not sold? And they said, well, because they're not good seats. And he says, oh, no. He says, sell them. So I think they were $45 each mm -hmm. or $25 each. And he donated all of the money to the, uh, I think it was the Flames Foundation. Mm. And so this is us before the concert gets started. So yeah, it was just a great night, a great night. He's a great entertainer. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Again, back to that uh, tip of the iceberg thing again. You know, we, we exactly. see them, them as great entertainers and successes and whatnot. You just imagine the work it goes into being oh. or getting there, right? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen by accident. Yeah, I would love to be able to do what he does as far as like just – you know, he signs a guitar and gives it to somebody, yeah. um, you know, just, just amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as they say, when you are able to, uh, uh, you know, be successful in life, uh, you have options that perhaps you didn't have before. And the exactly. question is, uh, what does one do with those options? When they Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's great. Wonderful. I'm glad you enjoy, uh, are you into country music more than others? And my friend, I'm just curious. Not that it matters know, to anybody. Was up, there was two types of music I hated, country and Western. And, uh, <laughs> you know, because I grew up in a small town, it was always country music. And then October was country music month. And so the one or two songs you got that were not country were gone. <laughs> and so um, I think what it is is with the music that's coming out now, I like a lot of the popular stuff. I like the beats. I work out to it in that. Yep. Um, but I think the country music just has a lot more meaning yeah. to it and the words. It's easier to understand the words than some of the new music that's coming out now. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I don't mind rap as long as you can understand the words and there's a good story to it. Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, there's some rap out there that's kill a teacher, kill a cop, kill your parents kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I'm definitely not in for that. Yeah. You know, when I came to Canada back in the early 80s, I listened to a whole lot of country. You know, small town, West Lock, Alberta, 5,000 oh, yeah. people. And uh, I remember one of my first uh, musical kind of possessions was actually a audio tape, a cassette tape that I bought at a flea market, imagine that, <laughs> flea market in Westlock. And it was uh, Don Williams. And, and oh, I wow. remember those songs. Because, you know, when, when your possessions are few, 
you utilize them a lot. Like I play that tape over and over and over and over. And then of course we watch, you know, Tommy Hunter and, and yeah. whatever have you. That, that's well, how I can see you and raise you on that. My first, I bought an eight track, uh, John, an evening with John Denver. Oh, love that. Eight track. Yeah. So eight now track. I am dating myself on that one. Yeah, no, I had a few eight tracks as well. So yeah. again, bought from the flea market. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, um, a friend of mine and I have, um, we try to in June go down south because we both love hot weather. We love Mexican food. And so um, I suggested to him a number of years ago um, that we climb to base camp Mount Everest. Mm. Uh, but after I said that, I realized that to do that, you basically have to be gone for three weeks. And I couldn't do that. I couldn't be away from my wife and my girls for three weeks. It just, I, I just couldn't do that. So uh, what we did was we did a whitewater rafting trip down the Grand Canyon in 2008 to Phantom Ranch, stayed overnight at Phantom Ranch, and then we hiked up out of the Grand Canyon to the south, uh, south Rim. That was awesome. And then three years later in 2011, we hiked down to Phantom Ranch, got on the boat and spent five days on the river. So in two trips, we've done 288 miles of the Grand Canyon, hiked out and into the Grand Canyon. And this is in 2011. This is our hike down. And we started, uh, I think it was just after five o'clock and it was sunrise. And wow. that was the beginning of our trail going down to the river. Yeah. Just amazing memories. And this is uh, the hike. You can see, <laughs> it's just like, I'm not a thin guy. So, I mean, it was, the hike out was a lot easier than the hike in. The hike in did me mm -hmm. in. I lost a toenail, my legs were clamping up, cramping up because you were stepping down and that jarring motion right. uh, is just a lot easier to climb up. Oh. Um, but, uh, but I love the heat and so you wear white so it doesn't hold the heat. When you get to a water station, you soak your shirt, you fill your hat with water, dump it over you to kill, cool yourself off wow. and you continue on down. Wow. <laughs> That's something that I never even thought of attempting, and uh, I don't know if I ever get around to that kind of activity. I I'm, uh, yeah, a little bit less active than that. <laughs> yeah, no. and this is uh, my second hole in one. I golf about five or six times a year, so we know it's not skill, it's all luck. <laughs> uh, I did mention I like bright colors, so that gives you an idea of the fact that I like bright colors. Yeah. Uh, first hole in one I got was uh, three days after my daughter was born, a group of police officers as a uh, year-end wrap-up with school resource officers, we got together. And so I uh, got a whole one and then, and then uh, I think this was 2017, June 6th, uh, in St. George, Utah. I uh, got a whole of one on uh, the ninth, part three. So yeah. elevated green, never even saw it go in the hole. Yeah. Now you mentioned, uh, again, uh, if we can just go back to the uh, your career as the police yeah. officer for a moment, is there a story that sticks out in your mind that is perhaps a, a bit of a highlight of that career? And and then I'm going to ask for the other question: Was there one where it was a challenging kind of story or situation where a little bit of a uh, a difficult time? So, so maybe just if you can share two stories around those would be sure. Great. Well, and I think for 25 think, years, I'm sure you've seen it. Uh, yeah, well, absolutely. For me. Uh, the highlight, I think, I mean, there's so many, but one of them would definitely be being asked to be the guest speaker at the grad ceremonies at mm -hmm. James Potter High School, two out of the four years I was there. Mm -hmm. um, and I knew when I had that opportunity, I wanted to do something special for the students because I don't remember my grad. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people I talked to don't remember the grads. So it was at the Jubilee Auditorium mm -hmm. in Calgary. And this is how I arrived to deliver my grad speech. Oh, hold on. Let me just uh, let me just zoom in on that. Uh, that is uh, very fun. Yeah. So uh, we had the uh, uh, music from Cops, Bad Boys, Bad Boys, What You Gonna Do playing and uh, booming over the speakers. And I drove out on the police Harley Davidson. So that's pretty sweet. What you gonna do when they come exactly. for you? <laughs> What's cool is that I'll do a presentation in northern Alberta or Saskatchewan and I'll have somebody come and say, you're the guy, you're the guy. I said, what are you talking about? My wife told me at her grad, some cop drove in, you're the guy. And I went, yeah. So then I get to reconnect with her in the, uh, the parent session later on that night. So, so that would be a positive. Um, as far as the negative, I would have to say fatals and when it involved a child. Uh, any any situation that we dealt with when it involves a child, it's at a whole different level. Mm. And I think that's why my passion for youth is uh, as high as it is, is because it's not that they're doing things on purpose, 
it's just that their brain's still developing. They're not fully thinking through and they're doing stuff. And I want to cause them to raise the maturity level to think right. um, at a different level than they are before I get to talk to them. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, uh, in other words, um, you know, life is full of uh, risk and uh, and challenges and whatnot. Uh, you, you just want to help them manage that part of it. Now, we can never make life completely safe, but uh, in your role as a police officer and in the knowledge and the heart that you have, you wanted to help them uh, kind of have a, a, a better chance uh, at a good life. Absolutely. Like, I mean, when I talk to the the assembly uh, for kids, you know, the, the one thing I say is I want to cause you to think. And I introduced him to Albert Einstein, who I think was a master of think. Mm. And one of the quotes he had was no problem can be solved from the same level of thinking that created it. Mm -hmm. And so that's why, like I tell him, I say grade nines can say, solve grade five issues. Grade 12 students can solve grade nine issues. In university, you can solve grade 12 issues. And mom and dads can solve all issues. <laughs> <laughs> and they laugh. And I go, okay, thank you. I'm glad we're on the same page. But if we raise ourselves out of where we're at, we can solve a lot of the issues that we have created. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to cause them to think about as we go through the process. And I want to open up their eyes to the fact that you may have a great life and mom and dad that say, I love you and all that stuff, but there's a lot of people that don't. Mm -hmm. And so I'll, I'll make a statement and I'll say, raise your hands if you know what I'm talking about is true. And when the hands go up, the kids are looking around, they can't believe that they're not alone. There's so many other students that are going through what they're going through and they had no idea. They thought they were doing this on their own. Mm -hmm. And so it's really powerful for the staff to see some of the things going on as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'll be in a school sometimes and I'll be talking and uh, I'll say, you know, I go to some schools where um, if you have a male gym teacher, there's stuff going, going on in the girls change room should not be going on. And if you have a female gym teacher, there's stuff going on in the guys change room should not be, should not be going on. And I'll see, some of the staff at the back kind of like, well, that doesn't happen here. And I'll say, raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about is true. The hands go up and it's like, Ugh. Hmm. oh, my goodness. Like they have no idea. And so I just want to expose those things so that we can create a better environment. And if we can create a better environment in the school, then we can, we can have better learning opportunities for the kids. And if we can, with the parent session, if we can uh, create um, a better home life, then that makes it easier for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, again, thank you for the work that you're doing, my friend, and, and uh, uh, continue um, energy and, and, and yeah. power to you and, and, and uh, with the, the help of your wife along the way as well, who, who like you say, is, is a school teacher, yeah. or perhaps. Uh, uh, so, so I want to take a look at this next photo here. Sure. Uh, I recognize this kind of a scene. I've been uh, uh, kind of been through that kind of situation, but uh, let's tell us about oh, yeah. that. This was amazing. So you can see the blue curtain down on the side. So the gym is cut in half mm -hmm. and uh, it's a small town, 758 people, I believe live in that town. And this parent session, when I, when I arrived the whole, like the, you can see all the chairs that are there. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Oh no, because no, it's like church. Nobody sits in the front pew. And mm -hmm. so I'm like, I'm going to be talking to everybody at the back and all that stuff. And I would say from 10 to 7 to 7, all these people showed up. And I was like, out of 758 people, 129 parents showed up to the parent session. Mm -hmm. Now you look at those percentages, because out of that 750 people, you're looking at a number of those are, are students. Mm -hmm. um, it was just an amazing turnout. And uh, we had a lot of fun uh, at that uh, parent session. It was, that was very good, very cool. <laughs> Uh, I want to ponder or linger on that a little yeah. bit. You mentioned the word fun. And uh, I mean, we all like to have fun. Now, your message being somewhat, well, very serious messages yeah. that you are uh, conveying. But it sounds like you recognize that these are, you know, youth who uh, really uh, resonate with fun. So, so tell us maybe some examples of how you inject fun into the experience for these uh, uh, students and, and their parents. Well, some of it will be some of the, the stories, the fun stories and that, but also just feeding off of their energy as well. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the things that they might say, I'll, I'll feed off of that. And I mean, it's always fun when they have like two sisters are sitting in the front row when you go, oh, so you're the favorite sister and you yeah. know that kind of stuff. It's just it's just playing off of what the audience gives you. You bet. Um, and, and we I'm just... Which is some of the lessons. Uh, I, I remember in CAPS one time I took a, 
a, a seminar on how to inject more fun into uh, yeah. your speaking and, and training and whatnot. And, and one of the key messages I got from those three comedians, uh, yeah, I don't know if you were there, but it was Tim Gard, uh, who, who is an uh, international uh, yeah. Hall of Fame speaker and whatnot. And Tim Gard, and uh, uh, I think it was, uh, was it uh, Michael and uh, George and uh, Mark, Mark and George. So Tim, Mark and George, they did this whole session around, you know, how to inject more fun uh, into your, your speaking and sessions. And the key message I got from that, it was that you don't have to be a comedian. No. All you need to do is look at life in a fun and light uh, and uh, in a fun way. And it's just all these little things that you inject, like the example you've given, right? You yeah. roll with it. You, you react to the environment. You interact with them with a fun attitude, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So Absolutely. not about coming in with a, a bunch of scripted uh, kind of jokes or anything like yeah, that. that. That's not my style. All right. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, which is great because... Um, and you do as uh, your your style is what uh, you know experts recommend we do as uh, as speakers and trainers and so on. Yeah. So so uh, in other words, don't try to be a comedian. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, tell us about this. So this was for uh, working at um, a conference in Edmonton of outreach uh, educators, hmm. and um, these I love working with um, the at risk youth. Hmm. Uh, I have spoken um, the last six years at a youth at risk conference in Calgary. I speak on drugs and alcohol and do a PD day, a parent session, student like, so there's different things that I can do when I speak at a conference. And uh, these guys are absolutely amazing. And the questions that happen afterwards, the dialogue that happened afterwards, and still today, um, it was amazing. But just, you know, uh, when I talk to staff at schools, I want to cause them to think as well about, you know, how's their perceptions for other staff members. Uh, I know a lot of the times when you go to a school that's K to 12, you'll have the uh, high school teachers that think that, you know, the kindergarten, grade one, grade two teachers have it so easy. Hmm. And, you know, some of them might think that the, uh, the high school has it so easy and English teachers in grade 10 and 11 and 12 think that gym uh, teachers have it so easy because they don't have marks, <laughs> but they don't also have to coach uh, until seven, eight, nine, ten o'clock at night. And so, you know, I tell them, look, why cry? Apply. If you're complaining about where you're at, you apply and go and teach there. And I tell you, you're you're going to realize it's not greener on the other side that you had it pretty good where you're at. But again, it takes somebody from the outside to bring it in to cause them to think, to have them look at their perceptions. Uh, you know, perception is uh, such a funny thing. It's true to us, but it doesn't mean that it's real. And an example I will use is um, when Jerome McGinla for the Calgary Flames retired, mm -hmm. and I'll try and do this quickly. Uh, basically, they had a, a ceremony before the game, and they had the nice big stage. They had chairs for dignitaries. They had chairs for his wife and his children, an empty chair for Jerome, all the awards that he'd won along the ice. Uh, they had... Um, you know, people get up and tell yuck yuck stories and laugh and they had a tribute video uh, and then they raised his banner, uh, his uh, uniform number up to the roof and all that stuff. And it was really done well. Of course, you know, some people talk too long and were too funny for too long, that kind of thing. But it, it worked really, really well. Two days later, my daughter, who's uh, I think she was 17 at the time, not big into hockey, comes up and he says, Dad, I went, yeah, she says number 12. I went, yeah. How did he die? Because in her world, when somebody important dies, a church is not big enough to hold the funeral in. Mm -hmm. And so what is a funeral? Big stage in an arena. We've seen that happen over the past years. Mm -hmm. Lots of flowers. I, 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 dignitaries come up and, and uh, talk. You have an empty chair maybe where they would have been seated. You have um, you know the awards and that. You have a, a video that honors their life and that. Um, that's her life. That was her perception that he had died. Mm. And so, you know, perception is a very powerful thing. Although it's true to us, it might not be real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the, the, the additional thought to that, uh, the obvious thing is that if we believe it's true to us, then we're going to act accordingly. Absolutely. On what might be uh, a fault understanding, uh, a false understanding. So, yeah. so uh, I'm going to veer us to uh, the, um, uh, let's go to the sessions. I wanted to kind of experience the sessions a little bit with you. We, right. we shared some photos earlier. And so tell us uh, a couple of things. One is uh, 
what's the typical length of your sessions that you typically do? I know you sometimes do three hours and, and little even, you know, beyond yeah. that. The small group sessions are three hours or mm -hmm. if, you know, some school, the bells, all that, you're looking at three hour or two hours and 20 minutes, two hours and 40, two hours and 45 minutes to three hours is what I would like. Yeah. Uh, it depends on the number of students as well. Like if I have a, a big class of 30, I want three hours. Mm -hmm. um, if I have to cut back, then that kind of robs them of the opportunity Mm -hmm. um, and they don't get the full experience. If I have like seven kids in a small group session, then I love three hours because it allows us to, uh, to talk more and to experience more. Um, but really the, the small group session is having them look uh, at each other and understanding that everybody has a story and that when you take the time to get to know another person's story, you'll have more compassion, respect, understanding and empathy for them. The problem is we don't take the time. And so the small group session is the time. And so what I do is I chip away for probably about an hour and 20 minutes talking, challenging them to be their best, uh, to soar with the eagles and not hang around with a bunch of turkeys, um, to be successful. And a lot of people think that successful people are happy people. And in actual fact, it's not the fact that, I mean, take a look at Robin Williams, very successful, not happy, died of suicide. Uh, the research actually shows that happy people become successful. So they all raise their hands and they want to be successful. The question they really need to ask themselves is, are you happy? Mm -hmm. Because you have to be happy first to become successful. And so we go through uh, looking at a whole lot of different, uh, basically we unpack this suitcase of a whole bunch of things that they're going through. And then we allow, we come to the point where we ask this question, finish off the statement, in my heart, in my heart I wish, in my heart I know, in my heart I believe. So I go first, I could probably go on for about eight minutes I explained to them that in my heart, I wish I had a closer relationship with my dad before he passed away. Mm -hmm. um, and I go, I go, you know, on and on and on uh, how um, the deterioration of my eyes over the last few years is, is insane. How I can't smell, um, you know, my, uh, I've had three operations on my nasal patches that I can't smell. And uh, so I go deeper and deeper and deeper with that water level. Mm -hmm. And then the staff members have two minutes to finish off in my heart. And what that does, it allows the students to see staff members in a different light, that this is not a teacher. Mm -hmm. This is a real person who just chose teaching as a career mm -hmm. after the teachers go. And I also allow the students to ask me any question they want. Uh, you know, <laughs> some of them are like, how many donuts have you ever eaten in one city? <laughs> you know, but, uh, it's, it, and that's, again, the humor part, right? And they can ask me any question they want. They'll ask me about my divorce, my kids, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, they're not allowed to ask anybody else any other questions. So the teachers have two minutes to finish off that statement. So the kids get to see them below the water level. Mm -hmm. And then after that's done, um, one person, one student decides that they're going to go first. They volunteer to go first. They get to decide which way the circle is going to go left or right. And they have 60 seconds to finish off the statement in my heart. I wish I knew, I believe, I hope, however they want to finish that off. And so the last part of the book which is what parents refer to as gold, is what are the students talking about, the pressures that they're facing. They're tired of the fighting and screaming and hollering that's going on in the houses between the parents. They're mm -hmm. tired of fighting between siblings. Um, they're tired of the friction in the family where they want to go see grandma and grandpa, but they can't see grandma and grandpa because if they do, mom and dad will be upset. And so they don't want to live in a house where mom and dad are upset with them. Mm -hmm. And so when I talk to the parents, I say, you know, a lot of the times that's a you issue and you're putting your kids in the middle mm -hmm. and they will resent you later on. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's a safety thing, cause the relatives a pedophile or whatever the case is, then okay, absolutely. The kids can't go. But if it's a you issue, you have to figure it out. So it might be as simple as saying, you know, you and I are brothers and we don't get along each other. So, but our kids want to spend time together. So do I'll draw my kids off so they can play with you and you and your wife have to agree not to disrespect us in front of the children and your kids come over and play with us. And my wife will agree not to disrespect you in front of the children. We don't have to see each other, but the kids need to be able to be with each other and play. Mm -hmm. Why would we have our issue separate those kids as well? Yeah. Um, so there's a, a lot of sibling abuse that uh, the kids will talk about where the parents are, you know, they don't just stop it, just stop it. And it's like, no, there's gotta be consequences for that. And, and the, what the, the example I give is, if the person abusing your younger child lived down the street and was doing that, in some cases, the police would be called and charges would be laid. But because it's in the family, it's all just lay off. Mm -hmm. And I said there has to be consequences for it. At the same time, if the young child is the annoying one, then there has to be consequences for them as well. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, really want to cause the parents to think, 
What kind of strategies did your parents do in raising you that you said when you were younger, I will never do this to my kids when, I have par- when I'm a parent and I have kids, and now they're doing it raising their children. Mm-hmm. So I really want to cause them to think from a different level as well. Mm-hmm. And a lot of parents will tell me, okay, we now know we all want to go home and hug our kids, but I have a question for you, and then they'll ask a question. Mm, yeah, oh, cool. Um, well, thank you for sharing that uh, that journey there. Uh, just bringing back another photo here. Here you are enjoying the good life of, uh, uh, is it the canyon, the Grand Canyon again? Yeah, dude, I mean, it doesn't get any better. If you like heat, it's 110 degrees. You're sizzling on that boat like a piece of bacon. Oh. But sunscreen is your friend. Mm. And so this is as we're coming in on the first trip. We're just coming around the bend to uh, Phantom Ranch where we're going to stay overnight and then hike out the next day. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it was, I was always the one behind the camera, mm-hmm. uh, but I had a, a, one of the passengers decided she was going to take a picture of me. And it was just, I mean, Hey, it's, it's a face for radio. It's not one for TV, but I don't know, was, my friend, that looks pretty cool. That's a cool face. That uh, just, that uh, like very, so cool, very cool face there. And I love the reflection in the glass, the mid, the um, glasses as well. Yeah. yeah uh, it was, Wow, that's awesome. And there you are in your elements at schools. This is uh, very different in the fact that I was uh, up in Peace River and I was uh, slated <clears throat> to do this drug presentation. And I think it was on a Tuesday, a Wednesday night. I believe it was a Wednesday night. And the weekend, the Saturday, I believe it was a Saturday that uh, before I arrived, uh, one of their, I think it was a 20 or a 21 year old. Uh, a child who had gone through the school system there died of suicide. Mm. And so the turnout for the drug presentation was, I think, around 150 people for that drug presentation. And uh, they all had their eyes open. Uh, and this was before uh, cannabis was legalized. Mm-hmm. And so it was a real eye opening experience for them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, powerful again. Um, you know, I just. Yeah. You know, I was at a school where I did the assembly, and then that night at a party, one of the students that should have been in the assembly was not, uh, got into a fight and was stabbed and died. And I still had two days left at the school to do small group sessions Hmm. after one of the students was uh, stabbed to death. So, yeah, different uh, different situations. But as a policeman, you're trained to deal with these. Yeah, yeah. Wow. The the one thing that I'd like to clarify, oh, these girls are amazing. This is the... uh, the show riders from um, from um, the Calgary Stampede. These are the girls that ride the horses. Mm-hmm. For a number of years, I've worked with the um, Calgary Stampede youth, the band, uh, the young Canadians, and them doing small group sessions as well as assemblies and that. Uh, but these ladies, total class act. The entire organization is classy. Um, but yeah, just amazing. So I asked them to send me a picture uh, that would, uh, and this is what they sent me. It's absolutely amazing. <clears throat> the one thing I want to clarify, <clears throat> yesterday was uh, Suicide Awareness Day for the year. And uh, I was listening to a radio station and they were talking about attempted suicide and committed suicide. And I want to clean up the, ter- the terminology with this. Uh, you don't attempt suicide. Um, you act on your suicidal thoughts. Mm-hmm. What students and adults have told me, when somebody uses the term attempt suicide to a person who has done that, what they hear is, oh, I'm a failure again. One more thing I couldn't do right. I couldn't even take my life. Mm-hmm. So the t- correct terminology is not attempted. The correct terminology is acted on suicidal thoughts. Mm-hmm. You don't commit suicide. And probably the best way to bring this to the attention is, do you commit cancer? Mm-hmm. It sounds really stu- silly when you say, do you commit cancer? No, you die of cancer. You die of suicide. So you act on suicidal thoughts or you die of suicide Mm. but there's no commit or attempt. Mm. Thank you. You know, and you'll see the media starting to change over the past, past few years. The media is starting to change that way, but yeah. it's one thing I wanted to get out to the viewers. Yeah. L- language does matter. Uh, Absolutely. There, there's a saying from long ago. I don't know who said it. I, I'm going to have to dig it up, but the idea of uh, a culture uh, will find difficulty thinking about or, or, or really acting on things that they don't have the language to describe. Yeah. So, so language does influence actions. Language does influence uh, uh, conceptualization of things, yeah. right? And, and the power of your words. I mean, I was up in uh, Cold Lake and uh, they had uh, the Orange Indigenous Shirt Day uh, for uh, residential schools. And um, 
this lady, I'm, I mean, I love bright colors. She's wearing, it's like a long sleeve Under Armour, about the same brightness as that golf shirt you saw me wearing on the hole in one. And I walked up, I said, I love that color on you. It was an absolutely amazing color. She goes, oh, thank you. So after the uh, presentation, I'm um, packing up my equipment. She comes up, says, uh, can I talk to you? I said, yeah, absolutely. She said, I want you to know when I got up this morning, I just wasn't feeling right. But when you gave me that compliment, you just made my day. And she cried on my shoulder. Mm -hmm. We don't know what's going on below the waterline with a lot of people. And sometimes simply giving one compliment, one heartfelt compliment can change their entire day. Mm -hmm. And how hard is it? We're very quick to give somebody a negative, but why can't we give somebody a positive comment? Mm -hmm. We don't do that enough. Yeah. It's a good reminder. Good reminder. And, um, let me bring in this uh, photo again, and we'll look at the, the next photo that, that is on the horizon there. Uh, right. And uh, looking at the next photo, oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, yes. That was, um, well, that was at the, uh, um, that, well, obviously is pink shirt day. And <laughs> I, I'm not sure if I'm in that picture or not. I, I can't find myself there, but it's a Catholic school in Wainwright. And the principal there, Michelle, is amazing. The assistant principal is amazing. And the students, amazing. Like when you go to schools like that, you just go, I have the best job in the world. I mean, it was just the kids were off the charts. Just absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. And so that was a picture I wanted to have because um, it really brought the community together. It's yeah. very cool. That's great. And I believe that's the last photo we have on file yes. here. And uh, uh, I want to say a couple of things, and I have some more questions for you. Okay. Uh, you mentioned how great it is to be at a school like that. Uh, um, some of my friends know that uh, when I was growing up, I wanted to be a school teacher. And the main reason for that is I, I really respect uh, who they are and the, the, the job right. and the influence they have. And, and so... You know, I, I missed a mark. I ended up teaching at uh, several universities part time on contract on oh, uh, leadership yeah. management and business, but, but but really have have really did not uh, fulfill my dream of being a, a school teacher. But but you know, if that ever happens for some some reason, still at my late age with uh, silver hair, as they call, it, I got to <laughs> tell you something. So with COVID here, I have stopped dyeing my hair. And then the other day, uh, some of my musician friends commented, uh, hey, Duna, I like the silver. And here I am thinking, silver, what are you talking about? Silver, silver, yeah. silver. It took me a while to actually clue into they were talking about my hair. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So t tell us uh, more about, uh, I'm going to hone in on COVID. I, we, I just meant, mentioned COVID. Let, let's hone in on that a little bit. Obviously, it affects uh, all of us uh, speakers, trainers, and educators yeah. in, 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 in many different ways. I'm sure it has affected you. Tell us a little bit about that. Tell us about how you're navigating that. Tell us about the the challenges and, and uh, you know, your way forward with that. Well, I found out when I was coming back from Bella Coola and, ha and Anaheim Lake, which is where Carey Price, the goalie for the Montreal Canadiens, went to school. I was coming back from there, and um, I heard that the NHL had been postponed, the NBA had been postponed. They canceled the NCAA Final right. Four tournament, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. I said, so I had a 15 hour trip, or I guess it's like, uh, yeah, it's a 15 hour trip to uh, kind of get my head wrapped around the process. And I went, you know, as long as my gym stays open, I'll be okay. <laughs> I got two workouts in and then the gym closed. So I was like, no way, this is crazy. Um, so yeah, speaking has ended for me. I am normally four or five days a week in the school all the time. Uh, thus the 500,000 students plus that I've talked to. Uh, right now, I have some schools booked in the fall, and I will be wearing a face shield uh, because it'll be easier to hear with my microphone than a mask. Um, the small group sessions, uh, they're going to be in the cohorts, uh, so they'll be okay that way. I'll continue to wear my mask. The assemblies are going to look different from school to school, province to province. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the schools, uh, some of the provinces that have not been heavily impacted by COVID, I believe that we'll just spread people out in the gym a little bit more and we'll be fine. Uh, with some that have been impacted, we're gonna. They wanted to do uh, small group sessions where they zoom. I'll do a small group, but they'll also zoom me into another classroom. And I know we cannot do that. These small group sessions are quite intense, and there's no way that you can do that. Uh, it, it just doesn't work. So we've come up with another strategy where I can do all the students in small group sessions 
uh, just stay an extra day. That's not a problem and um, not charge for it because it's just the right way to go. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's, it, it's really, it's like uh, COVID has un, unraveled itself for us over the months. And now the schools are going to be unraveling to find out what's going to work for them. And uh, so uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to be contacted this, this week here. There was no sense contacting schools because of the fact that they are worrying about protocols and staff members and students and is there, you know, all of that. They don't need somebody calling them saying, Hey, have you thought about, so I'm not calling them. I'll probably reach out to them next week. The schools that uh, canceled from March on, I will be reconnecting with them and rescheduling with them mm -hmm. and then reaching out to other schools because this, as a lot of adults have brought to my attention, with COVID going on, the material that I do is even more necessary in the schools Absolutely. than it was before. Absolutely. Uh, you know, with all of, I mean, <clears throat> people dealing with COVID, isolation, different, um, some turning to drugs and alcohol, some kids turning to drugs and alcohol, um, suicide, uh, they're saying suicide rates are up, uh, which is really scary. And so what I do when I go in and talk to the students, one of the things I do is I give them permission to talk to an adult about suicide. Um, and what the students say is that what we really appreciated is that some people come in and they'll kind of talk around the topic. Uh, you don't, you come in and say, if you're having thoughts of suicide, this is what we need. You know, so I go right in uh, to give them permission to talk to an adult. We're very free to share when we're having a great day. I was like, oh, that's awesome. It's you know, yeah, great. Oh, wow. You know what? You know, we get engaged that way. But when somebody, you know, how's your day? Nah, it's not that great. Um, we're like, oh, well, I hope it gets better. You walk away. And instead of getting engaged more with that person, we need to be more aware of the people around us, how they have been in the past. How are they now? Are you seeing differences in that? Maybe because we were isolated when when people get depressed in that the one thing they want to do is isolate themselves even more than what COVID isolated and the one thing that helps us get out of it is our group of friends right. and so when you're depressed in that one of the things you should be doing is hanging around with your friends in that yeah. rather than staying by yourself and getting becoming more depressed and so with COVID we weren't allowed to do that mm. for the uh, for the initial stages until we could expand our cohort circle yeah and so you need, we need to be more aware. We're so focused and hopefully through this COVID, what we've learned is, is that we need to take a time and, and, and not work so hard and, and take a look at what's going on around us and engage in that. And too many times we haven't in the past. Yeah. In other words, be a little bit more conscious about our basic human needs and, and the basic human needs of other fellow humans around us. Sure. Uh, you know, high achievement doesn't, amount to anything if we have people around us as well as ourselves uh, having risk with yeah. either health or, or our life uh, is at risk. Yep, I agree. I agree full heartedly. Yeah. So I think that uh, uh, I'm hoping that the schools, once they stabilize, uh, as you mentioned, the protocols and whatnot, uh, they will realize how important this program is that, that you've been delivering and how much more important it is during COVID times and during challenging time, as you mentioned, right? Yeah. And not uh, because, you know, it would be a shame to kind of say, well, we're, we're dealing with COVID and all of a sudden we leave this uh, um, really, a uh, really important need uh, unmet, and that is the the need to make sure that uh, the youth and the students are are, are well, uh, yeah. kind of informed and and well supported uh, in yes. the things that matter the most, right? Uh, which is life and, and, and safety. To, and to give them permission to talk, mm -hmm. uh, they need to understand that we're on their side. The teachers are on their side. They think it's an us versus them, and that's not the case. Mm -hmm. uh, they need to know that we're on their side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I'm curious. Um, Dwayne, do you have areas that you want to talk about that we haven't touched on yet based on our conversation so far? When I reach out to you and say, hey, Dwayne, would you like to come on yeah. and chat for an hour and a bit? Uh, were there areas or aspects uh, of your journey that you, you wanted to share that we haven't gotten to yet, my friend? I, I think that the parents just need to stay engaged with their children. I know teenagers don't want to have anything to do with their parents and that, but you need to stay engaged. Uh, for uh, dads, I, I do daddy-daughter dates. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm lucky enough to play hockey with my boys, but they're older now. They're in their 30s. So, I mean, that's easy. Um, but my daughter is 18. And this Saturday, tomorrow, I'm going to be taking her out for lunch uh, during her work period, take her out for lunch. We've gone to Canmore and Banff on daddy-daughter dates and gone out to, this, to the hot springs and just so just to spend some time together. And what I find is, is that 
the drive out there might be kind of quiet, but after a bite to eat and the hot springs and all that stuff, coming back, the conversation runs over. There's just, you drive slower so you can have more time with them. Mm. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of the times I see parents with their children, maybe at a restaurant or a park or whatever, but they've got their head into their phone and they're not paying attention to the kids at all. Mm. And it's, it's the digital world. There's a time and a place for it. But unfortunately, I mean, I've been to parent sessions where parents are on their phone constantly and they're not writing down information or notes about what it is that I'm talking about. It's something completely different. Mm. And so we need to re-engage in our kids' lives and, and not give up. Yeah. Uh, that would be the one thing I would say. The yeah. issues in the family tree, if your kids are being put in the middle or they feel they're being put in the middle, you need to act on that and you need to take steps, whatever steps those are. Uh, to make sure that you don't drive a wedge between them and the ones that they want to be with, yeah. um, you know, grandma, grandpas, whoever it is. And, um, you know, the kids are under a lot of pressure with social media and that they're under a lot of pressure. And their fear is, is that if they come to you with the social media aspect, negative things that are happening to them, that you're going to say, okay, that's it. It's gone. We're taking it away from you. Hmm. Well, you don't want to do that because then when something goes wrong, they're not going to come and talk to you about it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I have kids that will tell me stuff that they won't tell their parents because I'm safe and they won't tell their parents. And I guess the last thing to finish off with, stop che teasing your kids mm. because uh, I've, I've talked to parents that say, you got to stop teasing your kids. And I've had wives go to their husbands, go <clears throat> like this with the elbow in the parent session. Mm. Um, because when you're teaching your kids, they won't tell you anything because they're, they know based on past history you're going to use that to tease them or embarrass them in front of family or friends. And so they don't give you any information. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my daughters, I had a deal. Like if I'm teasing you and you, you, you can't handle it, you want me to stop, just say stop or no. And I stop right away. There's no like, oh, come on. I stop right away. They have the power to stop it. And uh, unfortunately, when they, some kids say no, that is the parents sign. I'm going to really go for it now because I've really got them. And, and it's not fun. Hmm. It's not fun. I mean, a lot of people think that uh, COVID, you know, was hard on everybody and majority. Absolutely. But the kids that used to get bullied every day at school, mm -hmm. they were happy. They didn't get abused. Yeah. The ones that had that negativity going on around with them, they were happy. Uh, I jokingly uh, told one of my friends who's an introvert, I said, I think this is a coup by the introvert to take over the world. <laughs> If the universe were doing that, they would have eliminated Zoom and all social media as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, good point. Good point. Good point. <laughs> yeah, well, that's just uh, thank you so much for sharing your journey with us uh, today, yeah. Dwayne. And uh, I'm going to ask you a couple more quick things. I'm going to wrap it up here, my friend. Okay. And for these couple quick things, I think it might be cool that I'm going to do this. So I'm going to take your video. I'm going to reorder it for just a moment here. So, so give me a second to do that. All right. And maybe I'm going to do it like this. So uh, as we kind of reminisce on uh, some of these photos that have some stories that you shared and, and some of the journey kind of uh, milestones along the way, um, give us a bit of a... Uh, uh, kind of take us out, my friend, take us out in whatever way you like in terms of uh, maybe tell some more stories, maybe summarizing some stuff, maybe uh, making a call to action of uh, some folks, uh, maybe reiterating something that you've said before. I'm just handing the wheel over to you, my friend, to uh, take us home here and, and wrap it up in however long and short you like it to be. Sure. Uh, we've covered a lot and I want to thank you for doing this for me. It was a pleasure to be on this. And I don't know if you do uh, seconds, but if you do sign me up, I would definitely love to come back and do this with you again. Yes, we do on. seconds. I would love to sign up for that as well. Mm -hmm. I think uh, for me coming out of this COVID, um, we have to be more sensitive to other people, uh, coworkers, as well as our children. I think that we have to be sensitive to uh, siblings as well. Um, everybody's going to deal with this in their own way. Um, and we have to be cognizant of that. Coworkers, uh, this is going to change the workplace completely as it has for professional speakers. I think businesses now are realizing they don't have to have all the square footage and floor spaces that um, employees are quite capable to work effectively and efficiently from home. 
and maybe come into an office one or two days a week instead of five days a week. So I think we're going to see some changes in that. And the political climate uh, is uh, changing south of us potentially, as well as in this uh, country as well. With the debt that we've been riding, uh, who knows what's going to happen? We have no idea. And COVID, the second wave, like we have no idea what's going to happen. Our school's going to be open come Christmas time. Hmm. It's just so many unknowns and it's hard to live your life with this many unknowns. And so stay true to the ones that are close to you, stay close to them, maintain good conversations with them, communication with others outside. And if you need help, reach out. Don't keep it to yourself. Don't suffer in silence. Um, reach out. I mean, I have had complete strangers contacting me via email because somebody said you need to talk to this guy. After this here, if somebody wants to reach out to me, they can very simply the website is www.lifesynergy for the number four youth.com. My email is doingpeace at gmail.com. Um, my phone number is on the website, Life Synergy, so you can contact me various ways. But I'm going to be here for you. And uh, on a number of occasions, I've had parents with their youth drive to Calgary three, four, five hours to Calgary to meet with me so that I can sit down and talk with them and, and help uh, resolve some of the issues that are going on or give them at least some hope for the future. And so if I can be that service to anybody, I will definitely do that. All you have to do is reach out. Yeah, wonderful. I'm just going to put your website up here so that we uh, we can have it just on screen here awesome. as well. Yeah, thank you. Do that. And the, uh, the um, website for the uh, thumb switch is uh, similar to that as well. You contact me, I can send you to that as well. So it's thumbswitchforlife.ca. Yeah. You know what? I'm just going to pull it up briefly here, my friend. You don't have a meeting to go to right now, do you? Nope. You're not driving to a school today? I cleared my entire <laughs> day for you. You want to have supper? We'll have supper together. <laughs> How special do I feel now, right? <laughs> well, I've heard people have done Zoom suppers. I have not done that, but maybe you'll be the first. <laughs> um, well, thank you for that uh, summarize, those summarizing thoughts. But what I'm going to do yep. is I love the colors of your website, my friend. So I'm going to bring it in here, if I could, sure. and just uh, share a little bit with our uh, viewers here very briefly. And uh, uh, if I go into here and, and look at that. So there's, there's the one website that um, tell us a little bit about what they might find on here. Well, you're going to be able to find testimonials, uh, some of the pictures that we used here as well. Uh, you're going to find out the different sessions I offer on uh, drugs and alcohol, the small group sessions, uh, discoveries of that. Um, the Basically, it allows you to know who my advisors are. Uh, if you go to the charity, it'll let you know who's on our board. Uh, but, you know, I don't do this alone. I have people that I can bounce things off of, uh, pretty important people. You can, if you see all the Facebook and Twitter handles there, you can go to our, my YouTube channel and check out some of the content of when I've been speaking at other schools and that, and some of the videos that I put out uh, pre-COVID as well. Um, but the bottom line is, is that if there's any questions, all they have to do is contact me. You can order the book on that, contact me and I'll get back to you. Um, there's, a, I believe there's a place on here where you can donate and that takes you right to the, um, to the uh, Thumb Switch website. Um, mm -hmm. but if, I mean, if there's anybody who wants to, all they have to do is contact me. I'll answer all their questions. If it works, yay. If it doesn't, not a problem. At least they showed interest and that was a great thing. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, so, uh, again, uh, thank you so much for sharing your journey and, and your, uh, uh, stories and insights with us, uh, Dwayne, and, uh, really appreciate it. And, uh, as we, uh, wrap this up, I want to also thank our, our, um, listeners and viewers out there who, who uh, sees this either live or, or perhaps uh, in the recorded version uh, yes. that will be uh, on the Facebook forever here. And uh, uh, so uh, again, thank you so much and best wishes with your transition into the post September, hopefully uh, schools and you will figure out a way to have you continue to contribute to the uh, uh, really the, the, the health and safety of our youth in school. And um, as well as uh, frankly, the teachers uh, will have a, much better time if uh, if if your messages are, are able to be transpired through uh, uh, all the schools that's necessary even during covid here uh, yeah. i hope that 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 priority has not been pri deprioritized uh, you know wrongly to the point where we have bigger problems because we're not taking care of our youth in school in the way that that's 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 really required that's awesome 
All right. Well, thank you, my friend. And uh, uh, to our viewers out there, thank you so much. You have been listening to uh, Dwayne Peace. And uh, uh, feel free to reach out to him uh, through the uh, comment section in this uh, video here. Feel free to uh, share the video and feel free to, uh, again, uh, put in practice some of the uh, advice that he has uh, shared there throughout the program. And uh, so till we meet again, folks, uh, take good care of yourself, take good care of one another, and uh, have a wonderful day. Goodbye. Thank, thanks, Dwayne. I'm going to uh, take us into the green room here. Uh, stay there for a